Hello students, welcome back. The question is from gate 2015 exam and is for one mark. They are asking in what order will these four system calls be executed by a server process. Let's have a look at the statement. Identify the correct order in which a server process must invoke the function calls accept, bind, listen and receive according to Unix API. Okay. Now suppose this is your machine and there is some process in this machine that wants to communicate with some other process in some other machine. Okay. So to facilitate this communication, first of all, you need to identify a machine uniquely in the entire world. Okay. And within that machine, there can be many processes. So after identifying this machine uniquely, you want to identify a process within that machine uniquely. Okay. So for this communication, we need sockets. There will be a socket in this machine as well as this machine. Okay. So sockets can be used to identify a process uniquely in entire world. First thing is you will identify this machine. So socket will have a IP address which is of 32 bits. Okay. So using this we have identified a machine. After this there will be a 16 bit port number. Okay. So in total this will be 48 bits. Okay. So using these 48 bits this process will be able to identify this process in entire world uniquely. Okay. So communication can begin. Now these sockets, they are sometimes called endpoints of communication. The reason is communication will begin from a socket and it will end at a socket. Okay. So both of these are endpoints. Have a look. Actually, this is a process. This one is also a process. So processes must be endpoints of communication. But socket will eventually identify a process only. So socket is also called endpoint of communication. Okay. So from this discussion, it is clear that the basic thing that we need to have is a socket, whether it is a client machine or it is a server machine. Okay. Socket is not a hardware. It's implemented at software level only. Okay. So a server process, it will first of all create a socket. For creating a socket, we have socket system call. Okay. So first system call will be socket. After creating a socket, we need to give a IP address and a port number to that socket. We have already seen that socket identifies the process uniquely using 48 bits. So to give a IP address, and a port number, we execute bind system call. So we will bind this socket to some 48 bit number. Okay. After this, we will execute listen system call. That means we'll start listening to this socket. Okay. If someone wants to communicate, we'll only get to know after the socket is activated. So listen will kind of activate or start that socket. Okay. After this, we'll execute accept system call. Okay. So fourth one in this order will be accept. See, this is a server process and some client process may try to connect to this process. Okay. That connection will be accepted using the accept system call. Now we have established a connection successfully. After this, we can execute send and receive. Any number of times and in any order. Okay. So if this process wants to receive some data, it will execute receive and parallelly it can execute send for sending some data and they can be like hundreds of times. After this, we will close this connection using close system call. Okay. So this is the order. Now have a look. The first one must be bind. Okay. 
सी दे हैव मैं सॉकेट इन दीज फोर सो विल एज्यूम दैट सॉकेट इज ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड देन वी नीड टू बाइंड दैट सॉकेट टू सम एड्रेस आफ्टर दैट वी नीड टू लिसन टू दैट सॉकेट देन इफ सम वन इज ट्राइंग टू कनेक्ट विल एक्सेप्ट दैट कनेक्शन आफ्टर दिस विल रिसीव डाटा ओके वी कैन इवन सेंड डाटा बट दीज फोर विल बी एग्जीक्यूटेड इन दिस ऑर्डर सो दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन now let's discuss some more points about client process also suppose this is a client process this process also needs a socket so first thing is we'll create a socket using socket system call then we'll try to connect to some server so the system call is connect okay like this now some of you might think that we haven't given any ip address and a port number to this socket the thing is this one is a client process in this process we need not give a port number and a ip address to a socket in advance okay so connect system call connect will first bind the socket then it will try to connect but in this case it is a server process we don't know when someone will try to connect so we just give a ip address and a port number in advance and we start listening okay but here we know when the communication will be initiated because we are the one the client is the one that is going to initiate a communication okay so the address that uh, ip address and port number can be given just before you try to initiate the communication that means in this step only we'll just bind it okay after this see i'm shielding a lot of information purposefully because i don't want to confuse you actually there will be some arguments in these system calls also and here there are lot of things that are happening that i am not discussing okay see it is possible that you have executed the system call and no one is trying to connect so this caller will go into a blocking mode and lot of things can happen suppose three four people are trying to connect and yet you haven't executed any accept system call so there are various scenarios but for gate you just need to know name of these calls name of these functions and their purpose okay see now you have accepted the connection then we'll just start the communication the actual data will be transferred using these two system calls only so i'll do one thing now i'll display a image you just analyze it properly you will understand how socket programming is done okay these are the various system calls have a look